We're coming to you today from Bar Marilou in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we're grateful to sit down today with a NFL quarterback, a Heisman Trophy winner, and uh, one of the most charismatic guys in the league. Today's guest is Mr. Jameis Winston. Yeah, because I met somebody where I was at the grocery yesterday, and I met a guy. He said, you, you, he always sees you in there getting a lot of juices. Where you at? Whole Foods or Fresh Market? Yeah. I'm in there, man. Are you? Yeah, I'm in there. Like, I get the, the watermelon juice. Oh, I, yeah. Like, I got a watermelon juice right here. Oh, you do, yeah, huh? I do. I do. All right. I keep it, man. You know, okay. Good, good for circulation, you know what I'm saying? Good for the body. Yeah, I'm just saying he keeps that thing on in my herd. I keep it. <laughs> that watermelon juice, bro. That's yeah. You got look. If you can't get to one in real time, keep the juice out of it. I feel that. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh thanks for coming in, bro. No, thank you. I'm thankful for this, man. I admire you, your story. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. I've been a lifelong Saints fan too. So uh yeah, this is really it's just a nice opportunity, man, to get to sit down with you today. Yeah, we 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 uh we went to the basketball game last night. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You been? Yeah, I've been to the, some Pels games. Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy the city, man. Smoothie King. Yeah. We actually, uh, we went to uh, one of uh, one of my old recruits back at Florida State, Malachi Dupree. Uh-huh. He, uh Went to LSU. We went to his little sushi spot. Me and Cam joined and a good friend, Stone, my wife, his wife. And we met a couple that just came from the game. They were celebrating their second year anniversary. Last night? Yeah, she had like on her Pels, like, chain and everything and I was like hey man y'all celebrating uh, uh did the Pills win yeah. last night you know you celebrate your anniversary that's a to big a night game. Yeah. yeah and they were talking about yeah we came all the way from Mississippi I said okay that's not that far but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate yeah. the anniversary it is <laughs> oh yeah I think anniversary is important man no doubt I celebrated mine uh Wednesday oh you did yeah no doubt nice what'd y'all do Man, four seasons at the four seasons. Really? Yeah, it was your, your four at the four seasons. Oh, that's how yeah, you do it? No doubt. We did it right. Wow. So I guess you got to find something that rhymes, huh? Each time, you think? Or like for fifth, what do you have to do then? Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. That's my, on my birthday. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, you can't mix them then? Yeah, nah. Yeah, what else? Yeah, I grew up not far across a lake, man. Uh, so I'm from this area. Covington, right? Yeah. Yeah. No you been doubt. over there? Well, I've, I've drove, driven over there to go to Alabama. Like oh, I'm yeah. From, I'm from Birmingham, Bessemer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, what was it like in your town growing up? Pretty small area? Yeah, pretty small. Uh, intimate. Uh, but we had, like, a lot of celebrities. Not celebrities, but some of the greatest athletes there. Like, Bo Jackson. Like, D'Amico Rhines, who coached for, uh, for Houston, te- Texans, Texans, huh? The uh, Texans. Te- Texans, yeah. Yeah, so, like, uh, Kerry Rhodes, uh, Corey White. Like, we we had a lot of, like, sports figures. There, Willie Mays was right down like really? about 15 minutes here from Fairfield. Willie really, Mays? Willie really, Mays, man. Did you ever get to see him when you were a child? Well, no. He's he's a little older than me. Right. Yeah. But even when you were a child. Oh, he was already deceased or no? No, he wasn't deceased, but like I, I never got to meet him. You think he'd drive down there and meet him? Well, I, I played it like his uh, baseball field. Oh, you I did? did have, yeah. Oh, nice. No doubt. No, it's been, it was cool. Uh, And yeah, what was it like? Did you have any pets growing up? Yeah, I had I had two pets. I had uh, two pit bulls. Um. One name was, uh, his name was Baghdad. Oh, damn, huh? Yeah. I mean, I think- He was just, a service dog? He was He was definitely a service dog, uh, but he was bad dad because of, I guess, the time that everything was going on. And like, and like when we first got him, he was a, uh, he was really a rescue. Like, he was into fighting and stuff, and like, he was all ate up and everything. Oh, damn. And, uh, and he really just, like, he became my best friend. Really? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like a lot of people are scared of pit bulls. Yeah. And he was a little timid at first just because of what he went through. And uh, and me and my dad was like, man, you know, he went through war, you know. And uh, at that time, you know, we were, uh, like, it was during, like, the early 2000s when a lot of things, a lot of events had happened. Where, in the Middle East. Yeah, in the Middle East. Yeah. So uh, we named him Baghdad, you know. Damn. Yeah. And another one was Ice. 
Oh, now uh, Ice seemed like he'd been into some other stuff. It was a she. It was a she. <laughs> okay, nah, I'm just nah, saying. She, Ice like, seemed like he might have got off into the drug game. We, gang, we got her from a from a kit from a is it is it little or a kit kitty? I think it's one of them. We got her from like a kennel. Oh like, yeah. So, so she was a puppy, and uh, we had her, and she was just she was feisty. Really? Yeah, she was feisty. A lot of the yeah, a lot of women females are overall, <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it that's, is. Look, they got to each be, his own. Yeah, to they got to be feisty, man. No yeah, it seemed like you might have. Did y'all have a cat or not? You don't see a lot of. Uh, did y'all ever own a cat? No, nah, I'm not. I'm not a cat guy. One of my best friends own. Like he, he's a cat guy. Uh-uh. Yeah. You don't see. I'm gonna. I I think you don't see a lot of brothers with cats either. To be honest, I uh, like honestly. Growing up, I used to see a lot of stray cats because, like, in the house yeah. I grew in, we had a lot of a lot of rats, like in the bottom of the house. So, like, them cats they'll come and get them rats. Like, it was really like I was a big fan of Tom and Jerry. Yeah, like that yeah. show. And like, it's like I had real life Tom and Jerry yeah. moments. <laughs> <You> the cats, <laughs> <laughs> like, we had pit bulls chained up in the back. We had the cats running through. Like, the, they was alley cats too. Like, they was some bad because them rats they was big. They was swell. Damn, you go yeah. down living on Noah's Ark, bro. <laughs> 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 hey man, there. it was a lot of it was a lot of species multiplying. Yeah. I'm Damn, trying to tell you, bro. cockroaches, yeah. everything. Oh, at night you've turned it. Yeah, you turn the lights off. You hear some romantic music going. Man, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Them yeah. animals are figuring it out, oh, baby. I, I, one of the most memorable things was the light bugs. Do you remember light bugs? Did y'all have yeah, light bugs? Bro. I feel like they're extinct, bro. I haven't seen any light bugs. Well, lately. I think there's so much light now that's in the cities because in the day they didn't have as much, you know, like especially if you're in the country, you're in a smaller environment. Right. You, there's not, you're not, people aren't running around with so much lights everywhere. You might have a porch light, maybe a, a like a flood light by the garage. Yeah. So right off in the distance you would see them. But now I think also when, when you're in a city, you just, if you see a light bug in a city, he lost. He got to be lost. Yeah. You know? I mean, he ain't. He probably did. He probably got hit by a windshield or something. Like, it's tough Or got to knocked off and now yeah. he lost in the city. Yeah. That'd be a good movie, wouldn't it? A lost light bug. But they call them fireflies. Like, I never knew, understood it. The lost flyer. But I think fireflies are maybe the ones that are out there popping off. They shooting, bro. Fireflies. I think light bugs are the ones that's out there really spreading the word, I feel like. Yeah. Because a light bug was amazing. When you were a kid and you saw a light bug. Yeah, it was. Because you didn't think it was anything in the dark. And then, oh, you see them. Like, literally. And they, they, like, glow. And they come back. They go dark and glow. And, like, it's like you end up falling. It's like, you know, it's like at a, at a kid, you know how you practice slow motion stuff. It's like you would mimic the light bug just going slow. Just seeing them just fly. And they oh, move yeah. like so subtle. Like it was, and then they disappear. And you run back and tell your parents. And that's when your mom usually, like, say to the dad, I think he's been. Smoking dope. <laughs> well, it was so many. Like, we used to get flooded with light bugs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We had to oh, watch out yeah. for the rats and the cats, but okay. get flooded with light bugs. Yeah, I, mean, I remember they had, because we would try to catch them in a jar if my grandmother would let mm -hmm. it, would give us like a little jar, like a mason jar or whatever. we try to catch them in there. Yeah. But then they die if you don't put the air in it. Yeah, they die. Yeah, we just catch them in our hands and let them go. Yeah. We end up squ squishing them and it'd be sad, but. Some of my younger cousins, they would just take the light out of there, like, uh -uh. like just kill them, just pull it out. Just oh dang, somebody in, grew up to be an electrician, probably most likely, because that's it. I mean, that is intense behavior to pull the light out of it. I, I don't think they had a lot of electricity. I mean, okay, I think they were pulling their soul out. It was light. the light. If something's flying around and they just got about half a watt on them, yeah, and you, pluck it out <laughs> Come on, like, you gotta take it, like put it on top of your head, like ding, I got an idea <laughs> yeah, to take yeah. this from you. Oh, that's wild, man. Yeah, I love stuff like that. I loved being like a child and like because every experience was so new. Mm -hmm. Everything when I was a kid was new, man. Yeah, that's no, one thing that was, I really miss. No, nah, like you're just so innocent, yeah, as a kid, like not much heartbreak, not much real failure. You know, everything is just a new experience to you. Like, you always know, like, if I fall down, I'm getting right back up. I'm continuing yeah. to play. But I feel like when we were young, like, everyone was outside. You know, oh. it wasn't like a, a video game time or anything like that. Like, we was outside playing. We getting to know other people. We getting into fights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, look who, who stole my cousin bike. Like, we going on oh, on real, like, search hunts. Like, who stole my cousin bike? Yeah. Like, stuff like and that. And then it was your other cousin. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Part. Your other cousin. Yeah, I know you like that. Who, who was actually... Like your true blood cousin, <laughs> I know, bro. you know what I'm saying? Because 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 your uncle had another lady up the street and that hey, you didn't know about, and that was what it was, man. <laughs> right. They met through choir, and that's what it was, that, man. All Singing it was. will bring people together. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I loved like little neighborhood stuff when you had your friends and you would go outside and see them. Um, I loved stuff like that. We played a lot of football outside. Yeah. 
we play in the street even too. Yeah. You know? Uh, did, y'all, did y'all play like throw them up, bust them up? Or like what did y'all play, two hand touch? We would play the game world where somebody throws it up and yeah. then you just run and hit them. Yeah. Yeah. Throw them up, bust them up. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, different. Yeah, they, and we lost some people. Did you have the same hair? Like, cause I feel like your hair is built for like that type of game. Oh, yeah, but my hair would stand out. It would stand out? Yeah. My yeah. hair would catch an out route, bro. I ain't got to raise my hands, Man, bro. it look, it look solid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thanks, bro. Yeah, you can't throw nothing through that. Oh, no, bro. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, yeah. I got, yeah. This is really some Jalen Ramsey hair, I feel like. <laughs> it's a real, sh- this is, I got some shutdown corners on this thing. Oh, you do. So, Lockdown. And, that's, and that he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, You have a lot going on, man, in your life right now, yeah, huh? I do. I do. Bless, man. Uh, You're going to be moving, man. Yeah. No, nah, I am. I am. And uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for for increase. I think like that's the biggest part. You know how it is like any part of your life, like you get to choose or how you view it, you know? And obviously you being from this city, you know how much this city is, how this city rock with like their, their football team. Oh but, man. Uh, man, I'm, ex- I'm excited for Cleveland, bro. Like I'm excited to to get to work. I'm excited to have an opportunity to to be at a, you know, a story franchise and, and, uh, and, and, and bring them hope. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, what is like the process as that happens? Mm-hmm. Like, like, how do you find out uh, that you're going to go somewhere else? What's that process like? It's like a... Do you hear about it first, or it really is a surprise? It's like a vetting process. Well, you you know, you got you got some type of inclination. Like, when you've been in a place for four years, and you haven't, like, moved up in, like, look at it as a company. If you haven't moved up in a company, and year by year, like, you moving down, like, eventually, yeah. like, they you about to get replaced, so you about to be out of there, or, like, they're not going to invest in, invest in you, or they don't think that, that you're worthy of an investment, you know, so you go and look for, uh, other opportunities. And, uh, the best thing is when an opportunity presents itself to you, because then you can grasp it. You know what I'm saying? When you are in a position where like you are starving for opportunities, right. like that's a little bit more challenging, you know? So this one, in this case, man, it was a, it was a great opportunity with, with Cleveland. Uh, and, uh, you know, you got agents and you have, uh, relationships that you build with these coaches and GMs, general managers of the team. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you, that you feel good about it there. Yeah, I feel I feel good about it because how I view it, like, bro, it's the opportunity. It's the opportunity to impact. It's the opportunity to increase. It's the opportunity to better myself. Right. You know, and I, I know I'm a strong component of, like, like, change is what you make it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we need that that shift, that, par- that paradigm shift to, like, challenge us, to put us in a new environment, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I feel that a lot, man. I feel that even as, like, there are moments in my own life and career where things have been going well. Mm-hmm. And then there's moments uh, where things feel like they haven't, my perception of things is that they haven't been going well. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, sometimes I get scared of how I behave when things aren't going well yeah. or the feelings that come up, the fears that like take over how I operate or um, yeah, I'll get into like not as much a desperation mode because I've had some experience with some of it now, mm-hmm. but I do get into a, a yeah, the first thing to leave is my faith or confidence that things are going to be okay a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. You know, because well, it feels scary. Well, I think, like, the fear the fear part is that's what um, that's what grabs you. You know, that's what puts you in that, that fight or flight stage. But when you, you said faith, like, faith is the first thing that you should hold on to because faith is really the things that you believe in that you have not seen. Like, typically when you experience pain, it's something that you have experienced. You've seen it. It's happened to you. And I think that's why... I'm always in this position because my faith allows me to hope for more, to want more, right? And like, and to dig in even deeper. You know, I, I feel like when you are, when, like, when you think of a seed, right? If I look at a seed, like, well, let's 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 do it. Let's do a, a acorn. Mm-hmm. Instance, like you look at an acorn. It's a seed. It's a seed. It's a good seed too. And acorn is turned to oak trees. You know what I'm saying? Did you know that? That's a good point. Right. So that Damn. seed, but for that seed to to grow into what it needs to become, it has to, it has one, it has to break. Like that seed has to be broken. Right. And then it has to get rooted. So before it sprouts up, it has to go down into the earth and and establish a foundation. So when you think about challenges, right? Wow. It's telling you, like, it's it's the Lord telling you, like, hey man, like we're gonna have to have a shift. You gotta get rooted in the real foundation, which is me. Right, which is the Lord, which yeah. is Jesus. Oh yeah, right? right. That's your foundation. Yeah, and before you can grow up, 
right? You're going to have some little seedlings. Like, you're going to have a little cracks in here. You might have a little, little uh, bird trying to come, come and snatch you out. Yeah. But through that trial, right, you're going to be able to turn into this beautiful oak tree. And you're going to be able to be fruitful and give to others through your testimony, through your experiences. And when you view, when you view it from that perspective, now that fear isn't as frightening. Yeah, you know no, that's ama- yeah, no, I feel that. And when we talk about like, like as kids, the reason we're fearless at, as kids because we know we gonna get n- another opportunity. We know, okay, if we get scrubbed on the football field, okay, we got tomorrow, right? You know what I'm saying? But as adults, those little pains that we get, you know, those little failures, they eat at us, and we start at, we start questioning ourselves, like, like wow, like, is are they better than me, or like, am I am I Missing something that I that I used to have, but as a kid, just like man, I'm I'm proud of the moment. Like we out here again, y'all. Yeah, we like we live and local. Back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm here. But as adults, I, it's those conditions, man. Like yeah, the conditions change because when you're a child, you really have so much blind faith. Yeah, don't you do. You? Even if you don't, even if as a kid you don't perceive it as faith in a higher power, you just feel mm-hmm. it as faith that you're gonna have another opportunity it's that life. you got the next day. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's really crazy how much that changes over time. Because, yeah, it's the conditions that change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's... Um, it's choices, it's decisions. Yeah. Especially as an adult. As a, as a kid, you don't... Like, you making decisions, but you're making decisions off of default. Right? As you get older, and as you get more intentional with your work, you know, like, like, you work your tail off. Yeah. And you got a strategic plan to what you're doing. Like, it's some people that think they're working, but they don't... They're, they're just working off default. Like alpha every day, like I'm waking up, I'm going to work. They're not designing nothing throughout their day to actually have an impact on their life yeah. that they've been given. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, huh? Yeah. Some people don't have the opportunity. Some people, they just don't want to accept the challenge probably either. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need a little bit more, a little bit more gravitas. And that's what you can have when you elevate your morning with Tommy John second skin underwear. What you put in your pants can make or break your day. And the luxurious support of second skin guarantees everything will go smoothly. Tommy John's stylish and soft second skin underwear has dozens of comfort innovations like a supportive contour pouch and breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands. What I love about my Tommy John's is it doesn't matter if you're lefty or righty. Because they got that Tommy John horizontal quick draw fly. So you can either hand. Because sometimes you're using the other hand. It's like trying to reach into a vending machine or whatever. Get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Theo. That's right. Save 20% on second skin at TommyJohn.com slash T-H-E-O. TommyJohn.com slash Theo. See site for details. Went to the Pelicans ball game last night, and um, I was grateful to get my tickets through Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They also guarantee the lowest price or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Your purchase is also covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code weekend for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code W-E-E-K-E-N-D for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So having won a national championship, having won a Heisman Trophy, like how, how and having been a, a, a starter that has all types of accolades, mm-hmm. interesting and powerful in the NFL, what is it like to be a backup quarterback? Like, what is what do people not know about being a backup? That's some of the tougher things, probably. I think the one of the most challenging things is like you have to prepare as if you're the starter, because the thing about the quarterback is like, it's only one person that get every other position has depth 
like they have someone else that's aligned with them that's doing oh, essentially yeah. the same thing that they're doing. Yeah. There's only one person on the field <clears throat> playing quarterback, right? And there's three people, maybe four, in a room. <sighs> so all those people in the room are, pre- are preparing for that specific role. Right. That's wild because, yeah, other other jobs don't have a backup. Like, you don't have, like, a backup mayor. Yeah. <laughs> and he's sitting in the next room. He's in there signing documents, and it's, like, cutting ribbons, you know, practicing yeah. cutting ribbons with big scissors. <laughs> right. You know? No, it's not. Or you don't have a backup waiter, you know, like, if your waiter's doing, you know, and he's in a parking lot, he's just running fake food out to people and right. just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, this, so that pressure isn't right there with other jobs. No, it's it's not. But it's it's uh you know pressure is for the unprepared. That's why you got to stay prepared, like in any role that you is. But specifically as the backup, you got to prepare like you the starter. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, like I'm always gonna view myself as a starter because I know like it happened to me. It oh, happened so to times. some of the greatest. Yeah. Like it, you are one play in the sport that we play from your career being over, from you losing your job, or you becoming oh. irrelevant. Oh well, Lord, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like that is the sport that that's the business that we in. That's the sport that we play. So I approach all that with gratitude, bro. Like I'm grateful for each day. I'm grateful to prepare, right? Like I'm gonna support whoever is in front of me. I'm gonna support all my teammates. But brother, I know what's real, and what's real is any moment, any time, any place, anything can happen. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Oh, any time, any place. <laughs> Come on. Man, yeah, I guess that's so true. I, so, do you see other people don't keep that same energy? Like, is it a because perspective is so, so much of life I learn is mm-hmm. about perspective, man. Yeah. If you could show up really with the gratitude and really with the perspective that there's possibility at any moment, it changes everything. Yeah, you I'm, become a beacon. You become a light bug for other people yeah. at that point. No, well, what we call to be, you know, the 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 the, the light of the, the light of the earth, you know, uh, so. I think when you in that role, it's not your job to see like, are they doing what I'm doing? Or am I doing what they doing? It's your job to see, man, how can I perfect what I'm doing to encourage somebody else to perfect what they doing so they can be their best self? Wow. You know, like, and I think that we get so much, like, because we all competing, right? We all we all chasing this this rat race. We all chasing something that's greater than us, right? But a lot of times we, we're so busy looking at other people yeah. running their race. Instead of focusing on the race that you got to run. Yeah. And I think one thing that I've learned through experience, because experience, like experience through like certain conditions, circumstances, and facts, like that's what creates perspective. You know, that's what gives people that wisdom, you know, because they, they went through something, oh, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's why, you know, I, I always, I'm always hanging around, you know, like you saw, you saw, I call my granddad. I'm always hold, hanging around people that are, that are wise, that are older because their experiences are, it's freaking gold, bro. Oh yeah. Like they've been through so much stuff and they've overcome so many different things. Oh, like Oh yeah. Bro, the 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 lo- the slowest way to learn is through your experience. So why not pick somebody else's brain? Why not learn or hang around somebody that's an old old head, senior you know, citizen? Yeah. You know Bring a couple saying? owls with yeah. you. Senior citizen, yeah. That's person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I use that all the time. <laughs> yeah, get you a couple owls, baby. That's what you need, you oh, know. God. My wife, she a rice owl. You know oh, she saying? went to Rice. Yeah, she went to Rice. Yeah. Oh wow! I saw. Oh yeah, LSU beat them the other day. I saw them in the women's in the women's game. They did, but for Rice though, I think Rice just happened that they got to play LSU. Yeah. You know, what I mean, saying? look, they're a start. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot right. of people they used to be in a recipe and suddenly right. You know court. what I'm saying? That's what I'm That's saying. They actually pressure. in the mix. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you get gumbo, you ain't thinking about the rice. You think oh, about the, the gumbo. game has changed. That's the that's the uh, Super Bowl for them if they yeah. end up in a gumbo. Right, it is. Um, you got to play with Drew Brees for a season, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And Drew, I got to meet Drew one time, right? So Drew Brees is an intense dude, man. He's locked in, bro. Yeah. You know, you could see that he, you know, it was at a dinner party. And you could see while he's talking to me behind me, he sees the whole dinner scenario, you know, like he sees like, you know, uh, the waiter is in the flat, you know, the bus boy gave up on his route early, Mm -hmm. the strong safeties rolling silverware, the maitre d's out of position. You could see he's got a lot going on, you Mm -hmm. know, What, what do you get to learn from like somebody that's that like a hall of fame? Like what is the difference in being around somebody like that? I think one thing about Drew is like he was very observant, he was very detailed, and he was very intentional with everything that he did. Like so, he had a mission 
for everything that he was doing. It was on purpose. And uh, I, so real purposeful. Yeah. So I so I I knew what his intent was for each day because he knew what his he was. He, that's how that's how he led. He led by example. He led by you know showing you like this is what I'm about. Either you gonna join or oh, you yeah. or you gonna get left behind, right? And I think that's why people follow follow him because they knew his direction. Uh, but I think just sitting back from afar, uh, learning just the X and O's, being able to see the relationship with him and his longtime head coach Sean Payton. But also reading books about Drew Brees, understanding the perspective, understanding that he went through one of his most challenging times, you know, when they won the Super Bowl. You know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you look, look up what happened. But uh, he he had certain circumstances, conditions, and facts that happened in his life. Even in his NFL career, early on in his career, uh, a team didn't believe in him. Yeah. So he continued to grow. He didn't point fingers, blame anybody else. He continued to overcome the naysayers, you know, and he set that standard every single day. And like, and when you're around someone like that, like you gain that perspective. And like, and that was a year that actually, like I was so grateful for that year to sit behind a Hall of Fame quarterback, learn how he moved and everything. Because me and, me and Drew Brees are two, like we are two separate like he is from one side of the block. I'm from the other side of the block. Yeah. So being able to be around him every single day and and just be in his presence, you know what I'm saying? See how, oh like, yeah. See see how he living. You know what I'm saying? What you you know with the Drew Brees? Yeah, you know what you what snacking on you know Drew? What I'm like God, like what Drew you, got him a rice crispy treat you know over there. What you having? And, and one one of the greatest things like that I learned about Drew Brees is like he helped me with food because his meals used to look so bad. I used to question, like, are we in New Orleans? Like, right. we don't got no chef that yeah. can cook Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah. Some that look better than this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he was so strict with the way he ate. You know, he was so intentional with everything that he did. Wow. And uh, and I was like, okay, that's that's the sacrifice that's allowing you to be the elite of the elite. You know what I'm saying? Those are the those are the disciplines that you're willing to take. To be in a city like New Orleans yeah. and not eat the stuff. And not that put, I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Not put that stuff in your Tony body. Tony on <laughs> you there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, no seasoning. Like, at all. I, oh. I don't even think. He probably used salt and pepper once. Oh, Lord. Like, that was those probably are, on Christmas Eve. You know what I'm saying? They, they come with everything. You know what I'm saying? I know. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> no, not but, even. Oh. Uh, but no, he was, a, he was an amazing. Paprika or something. Get him a spice rack being. for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, for real. Changes life up a yeah, little. No doubt. But you're right, that level of commitment though, because also a lot of salt gets into your joints and stuff like that, mm -hmm. especially as you get older. It gets that that's a thing that happens to people, you right. know, I think. But yeah, I guess interesting to see that just that level of commitment. Mm -hmm. And the amount of commitment we feel like we have to make to ourselves, because some people hold themselves to such a high standard mm -hmm. that if they don't make a certain amount of a level of commitment to themselves, then they don't feel um complete. Some people may help hold themselves to a different standard, and it's fine, whatever your standard is. But we all have this level, I think, of where if we hold ourselves there, mm -hmm. then and we meet ourselves there, then we feel complete, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's, I, I know it is, uh, it's great to challenge yourself and to push new limits and go to different heights, you know what I'm saying? And be tough on yourself. Mm -hmm. But you also got to give yourself some some grace. Like, grace, that's, what that, yeah. that's what that balance come in. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't be, you can't be, your worst enemy and your biggest fan. You know what I'm saying? Like Dude, I you, fit, that's how I get. You know what I'm saying? I turn into my worst. Yeah. It's like I'm trying so much I end up being my worst enemy, bro. But but you being two different people. You know, I feel like we talk to ourselves more than anybody else talk to us. Yeah. So you gotta give yourself that grace, man. You gotta speak life into you more than anybody else is gonna be speaking life into you. Because I guarantee you, somebody else, they they care about themselves more than they care about you. Yeah. So if you down and you all the time, how does how is that gonna make you feel down, depressed? Oh my goodness, now I gotta do this, now I gotta do that, now I gotta revert to this. Versus like, man, like if I'm like, okay, I didn't fail. Okay, I'm not the only person to fail. You know what I'm saying? Okay, how, yeah. I, how I get up out of this? You know what I'm saying? Who I need to talk to to get up out of this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like a like lawyer we, usually, but <laughs> that ain't what I, Hopefully we won't have to get to no legal action. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, we, we trying to stay out of some yeah, legal action, man. You got to stay up out of them. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm just talking about self esteem. Like, no, like what, what, what Cat Williams said, it's called self esteem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you got to lift yourself up, man. You got to give yourself life. <laughs> That's a good point, huh? Yeah, I think I, I, I wonder. Yeah, sometimes it's hard for me to see what the conversation I'm having with myself is. Does mm-hmm. that make any sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because we like I, I, I say it like this. Why do we give other people better advice than we give ourselves? I know. It's like we we counsel ourselves out because we don't listen to ourselves. So when we not listen to ourselves, how do we expect to hear ourselves when we in this in this funk? Or we in this like this 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 mode where we like we about to turn up, we about to go go into somebody here. We mad. You know what I'm saying? We're not hearing ourselves. We just reacting in a default. We're not being on purpose. Yeah. We're not being intentional. You know what I'm saying? We just like a little kid, we having an anxiety attack or we spazzing out. You know, yeah. all of us have those moments. But the ones are, that are all but that, are, that are able to, you know, look at those, at those moments, reflect on those moments and build off those moments and not let those moments destroy them. Like them the ones that end up being successful. It's interesting, huh? So much of that war is really it's a peace talk, but you have to bring yourself to the table that's the tough i just have sometimes i have tough times in that moment of like this is how i feel right now and instead of bringing myself to the table i just walk out and start you know executing a plan Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it's not really i haven't really brought myself into a place of like okay how do i do this best for me and for others and for you know yeah, sometimes that's a, that's a thing that I struggle with a lot sometimes. Yeah, man. Sometimes you just got to be led by the Spirit, man. Like one of my favorite verses is trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean out into your own understandings. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he shall direct your paths. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to really let go and let God. Man. Oh, yeah. The Lord is my GPS, no, baby. No, for real. Like you have, but you have to be, you have to humble yourself. Right. And just be like, look, I really don't got no control of what just happened. And let me give it up. Let me give it up, man. I know, and sit there and do nothing. I should be your therapist, man. I feel like I got you over here, man. You ready to lay down, you know what I'm saying? I can sit here and speak life into you, brother. What you need, Theo? Oh, yeah. Brother. Bring it on me, brother. <laughs> yeah, Play you, a hymn. You mindful. Oh, yeah. Play a hymn. Mama, pray for me. What's that it's one? You ever hear that one? Of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can still hear Mama's prayers. You ever hear that song? Mama prayer? That's an old one. <clears throat> See if you can look that up. Mama's Prayers. I used to love this song, man. Yeah, that's, uh, maybe that's it at the top. Let me see what is that one. I love it. Come on. Mm. Gotta be a grandma house. Always, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I can remember on Sunday mornings, if you were in Papa's house, you had to get up for Sunday morning prayer. Yeah, he's a little chatty moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Great guy, but it, it, it ain't nothing like a good gospel song with somebody <laughs> not talking at the, at the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? We go, there we go. Still here, my. Mama pray. Okay. Ella, she pray. I still hear Mama pray for me. I love that one, yes, man. I love That's it an too. old one I like. No doubt. That's a, how do you like if you're going to Cleveland? How do you guys find a new church? What's that? opportunity like well first you, i just called it an opportunity because you showed me that well you you connect you connect with one if you know somebody on the team that that goes to a specific church uh but i like this cleveland was actually even uh it was it was easy like literally when i signed with cleveland my dad had sent me like a youtube of uh, pastor vernon like at the word church and he has a huge church in cleveland and, uh, right. and I, I reached out to a couple of friends and like they connected me with him instantly, right? So I was like, okay, well, I got Pastor Vernon already. Like, so when you in that, when you getting fed, like, from other people and you being led and you walking with the Lord, like, it's like the Spirit find a way to connect you, like, with the right people. Yeah. 
So does, and, and what about like your family and stuff? Was it tough to like, did you find out you have, you're going to go to Cleveland and you have to go home and tell your wife about it or did y'all? So it's a process. It's a process of like, and it was a very tough process, uh, you know, because my wife is like that comfort. When you get that comfort bug, right? Like, it's like, it's tough to get anybody off their pivot foot when they comfortable. When they good where they, where they at? Oh yeah, uh, it's very challenging. That's me too, man. If I got me a like a, you get me a Powerade and sit me yeah. down somewhere, I'm leave me be for a little bit. Right. Well, well, I think, uh, and and it's kind of like a especially with this, with this city because my wife, her family is from the West oh, Bank. From oh, they're from, from the West Bank. Yeah, from Algiers. Oh yeah, I used to like so her dad, her dad from the West Bank, and like and she was so oh. rooted. She was so rooted here, had family here, and uh, and it was just tough. Transition is always tough, you know, but, you know, we're one and I want her to go with me. You know, she was like, hey, can I stay here? I'm like, yeah, baby, you can stay here if you want to, whatever you want. But in my back of my mind, like, I don't need you to stay here. I yeah. You with me. I got my babies. You know what I'm saying? I need to see you and my babies. You my primary baby. Yeah. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You the tallest <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you, yeah. you the first baby. You is. But uh, it, it, it's it's tough, man. It's tough having to move. Uh, but, uh whether it's tough, man, like it's an opportunity, you know, it's a, it's a chance to grow, you know, you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, man. Comfort really can be your coffin. You know, I know that mm -hmm. it can get real easy. Yeah. No doubt. Challenges, challenging yourself, accepting challenges, but then there is that fear that comes with it. And it's like, how do I manage the fear while I'm doing this new thing while I'm going this way? Right. Yeah. Um, but Joe, Joe, he was telling me something because I'm, I'm talking about like communicating with people. And he was like, man, when you have that fear, it's, it's better to do than be scared. Because you're scared, you're just sitting there. Yeah, you're just sitting there. You're just thinking. And like he, he told me, I was like, I was like, dang, Joe, like, what you doing? Give me advice for, man. Like, just do. And uh, and once you start doing, like, eventually that fear start being in that rearview mirror and you just leave it. You leave it there. Yeah, because a lot of times, man, there'll be opportunities, and I get so fearful, I stand there like this, like Barry Sanders, <laughs> and then I don't pick nothing. He went, he went standing. He was, yeah. he was cut and moving yeah, yeah. and getting north and south. <laughs> but I wasn't. I was just a side to side. Yeah, you know, I just you know, be like this, and then the opportunities will disappear because I didn't make a choice. Yeah, that happens. That's happened to me before in life. You know, yeah. where it's like I just yeah, instead of just going, mm -hmm. because if you go, you might realize one is wrong, and you could get both of them right. and see and find the right one. Um, when you were growing up, I know I've heard you talk about your dad was your a uh, coach, you know? Yeah. Um, and you guys all lived at y'all's house, y'all's family. Yeah. Cause yeah, when I was growing up, a lot of black, a lot of my black friends didn't have families like that. You yeah. know, they didn't have that family community. Yeah. You know, um, was that like, was it popular in your area that a lot of guys did? A lot of young black men no. had that? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, and does it make you feel almost... Like, would other kids clown you because you had that? Because, like, when I was growing up, like, in our neighborhood, uh, if you if you made some grades, good grades, a lot of kids would clown you. They yeah. would just uh, just cook you, you know, for trying to do better. Right. Well, I was clowned more for <clears throat> being a nerd, making good grades. Oh, damn, right. uh, seriously, than, like, having a dad in my life. Uh, I'm very grateful to have my father in my life. The sacrifices that he made for me has definitely allowed me to be where I'm at right now uh but even my dad like he loved he loved his mom he didn't have his dad in his life yeah but the women in my life my grandmother well my mother my grandmothers my grandmothers my aunts uh, they were the inspiration like because when you are in an environment and I, I had my uncles and stuff my mom was the youngest 11 and I grew up I grew up in in a home where you know my uncles and aunts they all in the house and my cousins everybody like, it was like twenty of us you know but it was it was perspective you know because like it's levels to it like you got people that are fifty you got kids that are two you got teenagers and you got like people that's going through a midlife crisis yeah you know so you learning you learning from everybody wow. and you picking from like okay I should, probably shouldn't be doing that you know what I'm saying oh grandma don't really don't condone that but I kind of like that you know so it's it's a different variety of it's things. It's a lot of education at it's once. It's a lot of education, a lot of stuff for you to learn, but when you don't have guidance, when you don't have a father who are, who is, even if they're not perfect, I think a lot of people get caught up in like, oh, like I expected you to be perfect, but you realize like ain't nobody really perfect. 
even if your father or if you don't have a father, even the people around you, the men in your life, the women in your life aren't perfect. You know what I'm saying? They're human. And you're going to go through the same human experiences that they're going through. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, I never got picked on for having a daddy, uh, but I definitely got picked on for being a nerd. Yeah, I never got to ask somebody, you know, because in, yeah. And I, I think a lot of people look at people like, like the reason you successful because you had a dad in your life. I'm like, man, do you not know who LeBron James is? Like he is known for not having a dad in his life and he LeBron James. Yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah, but yeah. like a, a lot of people use that because of the, honestly, the built up emotion or the built up uh, anger that they have that against they, another man. Right. You know, like oh, it's true. Huh? Like, like I think that that kind of overshadows. Like, there's every. I think every kid deserves to have a daddy. You know what I'm saying? But it is hard out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, people have different personalities that don't condone the father might be in the house. The daddy might want to be in the baby life, and the mama probably don't want him in the life, or the mama not in the baby life. You know, it's been it's been. I, I was talking to a man in the sauna today. You know, and he was talking about how his daddy went his life, and his mama died when he was ten. I was like, brother, that's that's tough. That's challenging. And he's still he's still doing well for himself. But he was talking about, we were talking about uh our kids. Like, like how are we supposed to speak life into our kids? He was telling me that he had a a, a son that was 10 and he loved video games and social media. Yeah. You know, he said he had another son that had those 14 had Down syndrome. He had a, a step, a stepdaughter. I don't want to get on into this man business, <laughs> but it was a, a a true direct correlation with he didn't have his dad in his life, he didn't have his mom in his life. But he still found a way to make something out of nothing. Mm. And I think we get so caught up in the, uh, oh, pity part. It's like, yo, you ain't have a daddy in your life? Oh, yeah, bro, I'm with you. Like, my daddy wasn't in my life either. You know what I'm saying? Oh, your mama your mama used to abuse you? Oh, I'm with you. My mama did. Like, But it's- Now it's let's like, take it out on the world. It's like, okay, yeah. what are we going to do? Like, what is the footprint we going to leave? Are we going to say that- we are who we are because we didn't have a daddy in our life or our mama was crazy to us. Or are we going to say like, look, my, my situation was not, it wasn't ideal, you know, but I, but I know through those, through those circumstances, through those experiences that I've grew and I've gained a lot of uh, knowledge. I gained a lot. I went through a lot of pain. Yeah. And, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one to decide you know, my fate uh, is my, is my response. My emotions are my responsibility. My actions are my responsibilities. Now I might have yeah. certain conditions, facts and circumstances that may have led to some of them decisions. But at the end of the day, it's still my responsibility because when you get out of that childhood, when you get out of that kid stage and you an adult, Ain't nobody looking at you like, Oh, he mustn't had a dad, a father in his life. Right. You know what I'm saying? They looking at you like, on to the next one. I'm going to grow up. For real. That's what it is. Yeah, that's a great point, man. I think there's aspects of my life where I've, like, I think I was, like, a late bloomer, too, like, realizing mm -hmm. a lot of stuff and getting past, like, a lot of childhood stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm, I certainly feel like I'm at a point now where I want to grow up more in some areas, right. you know? And I pray. That's what I pray about each day. I pray that God makes me more willing to uh, advance in some of these places and to let go of some resentments and help like soften some of the uh, discomfort that I have in places. Yeah. Cause sometimes there's things that are still hooking you to your past, you know? Right. And it's like, uh, sometimes there, it's hard to get, you know, like when you have like a, you had a boat dock and you got the things tied up mm -hmm. and some drunk guy tied the one and he tied a damn Christmas bow on it right. or something you can't get. Sometimes it's like, I got those. I really believe we have certain curses that are on us that were put on us through our family, through, generations yeah you know of of them you know living a, living a life but uh but i also believe in that 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 bondage that true peace and you know again let's talk about our faith let's talk about accepting our lord and savior jesus christ man and being separated from all that bondage and realizing like it is my life that i am free from everything that i feel like is holding me back to go do what i need to do for this world for me yeah you know, and I know it's tough. Like, no, no, I know you're not saying it's possible for everybody yeah, easily, but it's yeah, it's, it's something you, we have to hear, and that that's uh, that's why I'm listening to you saying I'm I'm happy to hear it today. It's a message that I need to be reminded of, mm -hmm. and I think it's why you're even saying it right now, and we're in the same space because yeah, I need to be reminded of that. 
that how long do I want to sit and look at the chains instead of look out the window? Yeah, come on. You know, like how, you know, like at a certain point, even my eyes are tired of looking at those chains. It's, it's truly perspective. Like, we, man, I, I uh, so I, I'm, I'm every time, every year, Black History Month, like I want to learn something new about black history. And obviously being from the South, like my image on slavery and Jim Crow laws in the dirty South is just this gruesome image of like white versus black. Like, man, they hated us. And like, I, don't, I can't believe like they, they look at us, they act like it's not that far. Uh, they, they are like, it's, it's, it's way, it's a hundred years from now, but it's right. very recent. Um, but I, but I, I got, I got this respect when I was watching this ma- masterclass uh, you know, about uh, African-American history, black history on masterclass. And, when my perspective was changed from all the great things that African Americans have accomplished, besides all of the treacherous things that African Americans went through, I started to see again that light that's inside of me. Like, wow, like I possess this. Man, yes, my people were enslaved. Yes, my people went through some terrible circumstances. They went through a rough time. But man, look at how my people overcame. Look at the love. Look at the power. Look at the victory that came from all that. You come, you came to a world where you were enslaved. Yeah. And now we walk around free. We walk around doing whatever we want to do. Walk, go down Bourbon Street. Oh, yeah. And see, and see if you could if you could if you could sense anything. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just wildness. You know, and it's and it's truly when yeah, you, I get jealous of black community sometimes because they got the best origin story. Like I yeah. always like the uh like if you look at a superhero or something, yeah, they got that you gotta have that origin story. Yeah. And it's easy for me to like I'm not gonna say like, oh, what a unique origin story, because obviously I know that there's tons of things that I don't even understand in it. Mm-hmm. I don't even understand like when somebody looks in a takes a 23 and me or something they can't even or they don't even know past where their grandparents are from mm-hmm. i don't know what that feels like. you know i don't know right. what it feels like to be in a place where you showed up as a commodity yeah you know like i don't have i don't know any of what that really feels like you know yeah. but um i do think it's uh there is something interesting about having a an origin story that you can derive if you're able to mm-hmm. start to turn a corner in your perspective um, while still acknowledging the past, mm-hmm. but to have it be uh, one of looking forward. Right. Well, I think you got to acknowledge the past because that's how you learn. That's how you grow. Yeah. Um, but I but I also believe that when you when you have acknowledged the past, you gotta you gotta think about ways that you can change it. Right. Not think of like at first I was so into like, OK, this is me. Like you did this to me. Like this is why I'm behind and my dad ain't living in a multi-million dollar house. Like I'm behind the eight right. ball. Right? right. We don't have generational wealth because we couldn't have generational wealth. Right. right. But now I look at it as like, man, like, OK, I got this light. I got this opportunity. Let me use it. Because right. people before me could sacrifice way more than me. In right. this in this part right now, and they still found a way to do it. Mm-hmm. So it would be ignorant of me to think that I'm not able to do something, right? Just because of the limitations and the restrictions. Now, now it is now systematic, systematic racism and stuff. Now it is a system, right? But, but it's changing. But fast. it's also a victory side to it, right? That you can focus on. That you can like the communities that you build. Like you got to surround yourself with those people. That are thinking like that. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, the long and if you only look at yourself as a victim, then it's impossible to really advance yourself for anybody. Like if I only look at the parts of me that, like if I only see myself as a victim, mm-hmm. right? And that's all I see myself as. It's gonna be really hard for me to have new opportunity because I don't have any perspective. I won't even see opportunity if it shows up. Man, I I, I learned this this uh. Like I was talking to one of my mentors and he shared this with me and uh, it kind of changed my perspective. He was like, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. Mm. Is that your perspective? Like we all think like, oh, I'm, I'm this type of person, but we're not, we're not thinking about the stuff that we put into our mind on a daily basis. Like what we think and what we set our attention to is really what we are. Not, right. not what we may think, how people view us, or how we may even view ourselves. 
But what we thinking, like, right. like, like poor, like being poor, like that's a mentality. Being rich, that's a mentality. Like these people just got, like Meek Mill said, like it's levels to it. Like when you are, have a poor mindset, like, man, that's, that's, that's struggle. That, 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 that's hurt. That's pain. But man, I didn't seen people like with no shoes, toes coming out their shoes that are happier than ever. Yeah. I didn't seen people with no shoes. At the beach, yeah. <laughs> no, bro. I didn't see people with no shoes, man. I'm talking about little kids. Oh, that's what no, you're saying. No shoes, right. man. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Because what they're thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I've gone to some different places like India, different places mm -hmm. you see these kids show up and they're yeah. just living. Man, you're like, yeah. oh, I wish I could be as happy as this kid. Yes, man. And he's sitting here and he got no, he, he's, nothing. Yeah. And he's got nothing for himself. Um, Speaking of Meek Mill, man, I got to ask, dude, uh, did he? Or didn't he? No, did he? No, did he? That's what Mace said. <laughs> <laughs> what I just said. Shady Rays, baby, I love them. You see me sport them sometimes in our solo episodes. I'll, I'll pop them rays on like a cop. And you should get ready for the season ahead with quality shades built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades that won't break the bank. Shady Rays is an independent sunglass company offering a world-class product rated five stars by over 300,000 people exclusively for our listeners Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code Theo for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Just go to ShadyRays.com and use code Theo for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. You know, when we bought tickets for the basketball game, uh, we had to act quickly because they kept disappearing. Um, and that's life. When you want something, you need to act quickly. You have to make your decision. It's like if you're hiring for your business, you want to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. So what's the best way to do that? Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter finds qualified candidates fast. And right now you can try it free at ziprecruiter.com slash Theo. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology takes center stage to identify top talent for your roles. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology starts showing you qualified people for it. Amp up your hiring performance with ZipRecruiter and find the best fast. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter regularly, get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to this exclusive web address right now to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Theo. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Theo. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Oh, you know what I just saw, man? They had the two girls, you know, there's a pair of conjoined women Really? And it's a double. Siamese yeah. twins. Siamese twins, brother. And they married a man. One of them got married. Okay. You see that? So I just wonder how does that. Yeah. Because sometimes it's hard enough you're married. Yes. And if some of my in-law will get involved in a discussion, yes. sometimes it can be challenging. Right. So if you got an in-law. I mean, you got a dang neck neighbor, you know? I mean, to each his own. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, how but tough would it be to manage a... Uh, I, I'm just... I'm, what, I, what I'm really trying to picture, like, is he is he dealing with one woman or two women? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm trying to picture. Because if he's dealing with two women, then right on, brother. Yeah, it's... That is, yeah, I wonder what he, yeah, does he really want to be Mormon, I'm wondering, you know? Or does he, you know what I'm saying? Does he really want to have multiple I, wives? I, 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 I can speak Mormon too, you know? Yeah. I can speak Mormon. Have you ever been to a Mormon church? Can you, 
I've never been to a Mormon church, but I've had uh, a lot of Mormon teammates, teammates. and they're the nicest people oh, yeah. that you can ever be a teammate with. I would be Mormon. I've been before to like uh, in Salt Lake. You can go see like um, John Luther. What was the? Sorry, I'm, my brain is bad today. Joseph Smith. Joseph yeah, you Smith, can go yeah. see like the campus, the Mormon campus, and everything. It's beautiful. Right. It's stunning over there. Um, Jameis, when you look at guys like like Caleb Williams, has caught a lot of flack this year. I think more than to me, it feels like just as a like a just a fan, mm -hmm. uh, it feels like he's caught more flack than anybody, a, a starting quarterback in a long time, yeah. who's going to come out of the draft. Um, they recently they're talking about him for having a pink phone case, or just his, uh, or just or fingernail polish. Just, it seems like a level of scrutiny that's it's almost gone overboard, man. I think like to whom much is given, much is required, and when you are. Mm -hmm. Um, when you are in a position uh, as he is, and when you reach a level of excellence that he has attained as being an excellent college quarterback, uh, it just comes with the territory, you know. And I think, in like, if I was in his shoes, I, I know what it's I know what it's like to be scrutinized like that on a whole different spectrum. Uh, and you have to you have to focus on who you are. Uh, you have to get closer to the people that's around you. You gotta you gotta push through that now. Like I don't, I don't know about the fingernail polish and the lipstick and stuff. Like that's his, that's his life, you know. Uh, oh look, we've all been to, yeah, we've had a couple had, all had a moment or something at a like that's his look, that's his life or whatever. I know he can play football, and I know that uh, character is what you do when no one is looking. So I just I pray that he is focusing on his character, and not and football ain't everything for him. Right, and I and I know he been to Oklahoma. I was an Oklahoma fan. I grew up an Oklahoma fan. Really? Yeah, I really did, bro. Why though? Like, because because of... Oklahoma beat Florida State in two, two, uh, 2000. That's championship. Oh, so you just that's how you got on. I, Florida State was my daddy team, so I was yeah. just like, you I gotta jumped, pick something different. I was different. one of them bandwagon. I just jumped on. I was like booming sooner ever since then, you know. So that's why I like Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. Like, dude, I love Baker, bro. Yeah, nah. bro. Is there anybody more fun to cheer for than Baker? I feel like, man. Baker is a dog. I think he is a he he is a beast, man. He, he will be not be denied, man. I mean, the opposition had him at like it's yeah. a, almost a rap. Yeah. It felt like. But then he's like, nah. -uh. No, he out. He out. He doing and his thing. Now look at him. He's doing his thing. But like, there's so many stories like that, man. There's so many stories that people just continue to push through. Like, you're gonna come out on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's one of those guys that everybody if you don't support Baker, I don't understand where you're at there, yeah. you know? Yeah, just that pressure. But do you feel like the media is at a place where it's just or it's just always going to be like that? It just feels like this year, like, they've gone crazy on him. Like, who cares? Like, it's a young guy trying to be a good quarterback. Man, and, like, these are kids that they're scrutinizing. But in, in, in the common eye, you can be a kid, but if you're a celebrity, you're a grown man. Right. And like, and now everyone's so entitled to say whatever they want to say, you know what I'm saying? And like, and as, as media, we are attracted to those negative things. Like we're not attracted I to know. like, oh, Caleb Williams had a football camp with 300 yeah. uh, kids and like he gave everybody free Jordans. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're not attracted Bo to those. Yeah. Caleb Williams made a nice pasta. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think he's a pasta person. But I don't know. It definitely seemed he... I mean, hey, who knows? He'll probably have a dang housewares collection in a couple months, yeah. according to the media. No, you know, no doubt. He'll be have a flatware line. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's like, yeah, nobody wants to. But yeah, we don't look at, we don't gravitate towards that. Man, I don't think, I don't think like the world, like life, like obviously we say life ain't fair, but people's opinion really not fair, bro. Like, like what do you mean? Like, man? I mean, like everyone gets this public persona but no one really knows who that person truly is a hundred percent you know like and again let's go back to the social media thing like social media has some great stuff but again like i know people that are broke as a dog and if you look at their social media oh, yeah. they flexing they mm. like they got you jewelry just, on a 
puppy the puppy got damn gold earrings that's what I'm saying I'm just like on. I'm like what are you trying to portray like we know you yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, who you hired from? Yeah, you sleeping in my yeah. back bedroom, bro. I just yeah. paid your light bill <laughs> yeah, the other day. Yeah. Like, what you doing? Huh? Like, don't don't let my my gratitude ruin you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You gonna go to the club and spend two hundred dollars? <laughs> you can't spend two hundred dollars at the club. You spend all the money I gave. Golly, that is true, huh? Like, taking a picture in somebody else's booth. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. They went to the bathroom. They standing up in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's like. How you get there? <laughs> Golly, your yeah. hustle's strong, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. That is true. It's interesting. Um, what else did I want to think about? Yeah, I guess just being in a new place. Have you gone to Cleveland yet and picked out a home and everything? Man, I, I went to Cleveland. Uh, uh, I haven't picked out a home yet, but it was like, it was really like eye opening. It was like. Because people, people rip on Cleveland a lot, you know? They do. And it's a beautiful city, but like. Obviously, when we, we talk about Cleveland, they say, oh, it's cold. It's going to be cold up there. And when you come from Tampa and New Orleans, like, it don't really get cold here. No. You know? And then it was- Get cold. Maybe it, in the freezer section at Rouse's, that's it. Bro, but it was one of the moments where, like, I'm I'm getting my physical, you know? And it was cold when we got there. But uh, her name was Julie. She would say, yo, it's snowing. I was like, it's wet. It's snowing out here in March. Like, I ain't never seen no snow in March. <laughs> so I send the video- to my wife, and I was like, hey, baby, look, oh. it's snowing. And she's like, I am not a kid, Jameis. You don't have to tell me it's snowing. I see it's snowing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see no snow right now. I want to <laughs> see a beach. And I was like, I right, bet you got it. You know, but I guess they're going to talk about the code. Back to the drawing board. No, for real. Like, you, like you started all over again. <laughs> That's a husband's job. <laughs> just to start all over again. I'm just, huh? You know, I just hit, I hit it with the like, well, you know, this is going to be our first Christmas where the babies get to play in the snow. You know what I'm saying? They go, She's like, it's almost May, Jameis. <laughs> For real. <laughs> doing a Christmas in May. For real, no. What's that like being a husband, man? Was that scary for you or what very, was? It was very scary for me, man. But like, that's my high school sweetheart. And like, man, you talking about fear, like, like commitment to one person is, that is fear, you know, because your life is in their hands and their life is in, in your hands. So, when you're maneuvering and when you have all these different experiences that's coming at you, you have to, you have to be strong, man. You have to be strong and know like this, this is my priority. This is my love. Like this is my first love, right? Whatever can be attractive to my eyes or anything outside of that. Like it, it doesn't, I don't condone that, you know? And it, and plus my girl, like she an OG man. like she was like really the dream. Like, I was a football player, and I, obviously I was an athlete in, in, in high school, and she was a hooper. Like, you know, back in the day, love and basketball, that was everything. Oh, like, so yeah, that was romantic. My, my, whole, my whole thing was like, man, like, I wish I knew how to play basketball so I could have a love and basketball moment. But boom, like, God bless me with a girl that can hoop. That was pretty. That had all these the, the best eyes. Like, her eyes. Like, oh, I just Lord. stand her eyes, and it's just like, God, leave, girl. They got, like, what, you, what you doing? What you me? doing with them eyes, You know, huh? but like. Uh, I ain't when I was blessed with that, man, in eyes. I was like, my heart was was took. You know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all are right there. Yeah, that's us, man. And y'all in the y'all in the water, baby, getting yeah, it, huh? That's in our house, man. We did the, we did the wedding. At, at oh, the that's beautiful, man. Got my bro, my brother in them. That ain't my brother for real, but that's like my that's my life coach, Tavon. He right there. In the that's middle. your lifeguard too. He in a dang. He in the shy. Yeah, that ain't the shallow end. I don't think. Hey, it's a step. And, oh, okay. And, and look, and we tried to, we had him on a brick. <laughs> so he will be all, level. Man. And like, and he slipped off the brick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doing the ceremony. We was like, all right, man, we know you dedicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh, like, that's I'm cheating gonna... at the combine if you're standing on a brick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, man. He, he like, I don't, I don't think nobody was expecting to get, you know, they, they uh, pants wet. But I was like, we got to get in the water. Like, because this is what it is. This water, we got to be flowing. Like, we got to be water together. I love it, man. I like that, man. You just kind of make your choices and that's it for you. You know, mm-hmm. it seems like your self-confidence is at a unique, is it is really unique compared to other people, man. Yeah. Were, do you, were you always like that? Do you feel like, or was that something that was kind of built? Do you think it was just a gift that you had? I feel like it's, a, it's, it's still growing. Uh, I've always been confident uh, in myself, but more importantly in my faith, you know what I'm saying? Like I was rooted in the church, like old Southern ba- or old Southern Baptist. From when you were little. Like, from when I was little. Like, but when I actually started to know God and I started to understand, like, that I'm fighting from victory, not for victory, like, then I, I, I just, I took a different approach. I took a different approach to 
the way that I live. I and, see. And I think it's like the accumulation of really the, who you surround yourself with, like seeing other people that's like walking, like firm, that are strong brothers, and that ain't like lukewarm. Like that gives you that confidence. Like that gives you that affirmation to be like, okay, like man, I need to like, what am I doing? And like you said, you question yourself. It's been so a lot of times where I've questioned myself. It's been some lot of times in the NFL where I just like, man, like, like who am I? Like what I got going on? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I had to dig deep and just be like, okay, like this is who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Get back to your to right. your foundation. What is my foundation? Uh, if I don't if I don't believe in this foundation that I built, then why did I even build it then? Right. Why, you have to, yeah. I'm not here for no reason. Right. I'm here for a purpose. My own unique purpose. All right, so I got to live it. You know Dang, man. I might try out for somebody. <laughs> you could do it, bro. Yeah, the Colts might need someone. I don't know who needs somebody right now. <laughs> um, what do you think about this new rule with the hip drop tackle? Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, I think, I think it is. Uh, they're trying to make the game safer. But as, as I've been in the league, you know, I, I've seen it trend to be more of a, you know, a player friendly league. I think it takes an uh, incredible amount of discipline and uh, and athletic ability as people that are actually making those tackles to avoid making that tackle. So I think like when you make a rule, like you say, OK, this is the rule. We can't do this no more. But as athletes being trained a, to do a certain way like for years for for their whole life yeah to just get somebody on the ga- ground any way possible i think it's challenging man and and i and i'm and I'm, I'm 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 happy for player safety but at the same time like i know like i'm from alabama like we love football right however if if you get if you run across the middle and somebody take your head off that's football get back up are you okay your chin strap okay what you say? How many fingers I got? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, come on. We we about to do it again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm dropped back in the pocket. Somebody come and slap me up on my head. Like, okay, I want that 15, but like, hey, like, okay, I see you came to play today. Right. Okay? Like, it's just, it's the brotherhood and it's the like, like, we warriors out there, man. Like I said earlier, like, man, we one play away from our career being done. You know, so I do respect the NFL making this player safety uh, protocol and like doing everything they can to help you know prolong people's careers but I think it's tough I think it's tough on the players yeah yeah I think it's interesting to see like and if you keep making th- like I worry about if you put so much in the hands of the referees because there's a lot of people start to say that a lot of speculation you see of people saying that things are fixed or organized or you know gambling is a lot more just in our everyday life now every other commercial is for it you know, I mean, we advertise it. It's like, mm-hmm. it's everywhere. So I just wonder if you, when you put stuff more in the hands of the referees too and give them one more space where it could be a crucial call in a playoff game next year. Right. Um, what does that look like, you know? How, well, how weird is that, you know? When, when you when you look at the field, uh, you know, yeah, a, lo- a, yeah, lot we, of, a lot of times people just see the two teams, right? right. Team A, Team B. But, bro, you forget, it's another team out there and they got on black and white. Yep. Right, and they're working together. Like a lot of these, a lot of the referees, like when you get to know them, like bro, like they're insurance agents. They're not even doing this year round. Yeah. You know, this is a hobby for them to yeah. make. You know, emu, six, 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 six for real. Yeah. Make six figures just to what you doing, huh? Get on side. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm but have like, a mixtape. One dude, he, but yeah, I know they had a one video. Some guy he tapped into the make the announcement, and he. Played a, a half a track off of his mixtape, and people are like, "Well, what is even going on here?" It is, is, is. You got to think about how tough it is first to make in-game decisions oh. to police grown men that are playing at the fastest level. So I got a lot of respect for the referees, but man, yeah. like it's a third team, bro. Like you playing against two teams, you're not just playing against the uh, the other team. You playing against two teams because you know they have the rules and regulations, and this they job, but they can dictate a game. Now, yeah. as as a leader. Uh, as a coach or, or a person of, of influence, like you can't say we can't, we, we're not going to allow the refs to dictate this game, but they have s- a certain level of authority that can't, if they make a call it's huge. and they're human, just like us, if it's a mistake, they ain't finna say, oh my bad. Like literally, look, we write reports after the game. Coaches are sending it, sending it in, like, okay, this was a penalty, this was a penalty, and you'll get a letter back. 
this was a penalty. Sorry. Nuh-uh. I don't know if they send sorry. Like, sorry is very polite. Right. But they'll, they'll literally be like. This, this emoji. This, this, this a, this a, yeah, for real. Yeah, it's like, that was a penalty. All right, move to the next one. Yeah. And you're just like, what? what? We can't get that play back? I know. And it's crazy. Well, yeah, there was that famous play in New Orleans that happened, too. I think this was before you were here, whenever mm -hmm. there was a pass interference against the Rams. It took them from going to the Super Bowl. I mean, that changes Drew Brees from having a dynasty operation in, right. in Peyton to things being... You know, he's still, yeah. he's still, he's super still challenging. Yeah. Um, here you go right here. John Hussey is a sales representative has been a referee for nine seasons. Alex Kemp, an insurance agent has been a referee for six seasons and his six season. Clay Martin is a high school administrator. Dang, he a damn principal yeah. and a basketball coach. <laughs> he reading term papers during, on his phone, probably at halftime. Yeah. Uh, Scott Novak is in his fifth season as a referee. Brad Rogers is a college professor. Um, Ron yeah. Torbert's an attorney. Yeah, you already know it. He's been a referee for ten seasons. What is going on? We we got uh we got somebody in aerospace. Uh uh. Uh huh. Adrian, oh. Adrian Hill. He in, he in aerospace. Oh wow. He an engineer. They got they got different careers, man. Like that's what I'm saying. Like our li our livelihood is on the game. Yeah, it says Craig Warset is a drill rapper. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, I mean, this is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Well, we gotta get they gotta get some guys that are just referees. Yeah, no, nah, they're not. Man, that thing times have changed, man. It is. Um, what else? We got Easter coming up, man. Y'all gonna celebrate? What you guys got going on? Yeah, we uh we're gonna celebrate Easter. They have obviously. a beautiful parade in New Orleans, too. They do. It's at two PM. I think it's in the French quarter. I've seen it a couple times when I was younger, but it's nice, man. I've never been to the Easter parade. It's nice. What do y'all do? Easter egg yeah, hunt or something? Go to church. And uh, the boys did an Easter egg hunt uh, early this week, so we don't have to do no Easter egg hunts. But uh, we we gonna uh, it's a spring break this year, so we gonna get out of town next week. Yeah. Any other stuff you guys want to look at, man? Where y'all gonna go up to Cleveland or no? Not now. We are gonna wait till it's summer, summer before we go up to Cleveland. Okay. For the family to go up there, I'm gonna be up there in, in two weeks. Um. Scott Fujita, I think, played for yeah. Linebacker. Cleveland as well. And the Saints. Mm -hmm. He's a really well, neat DeMar guy. Demario Davis. He he came. Oh yeah, Demario yeah. plays. I see him in Nashville sometimes. That's yeah. where I live at. Yeah. No, that's where he lives. Oh, it is? Uh -huh. I see him sometimes we'll pop, he'll pop into the same we go to the same I V place. Oh, for real? And he'll uh I, I've never said hey to him, but I seen him in there. Yeah. He's a big guy. He's a great brother. Is he? He's great, bro. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Like he he's one of those men. That being in a locker room with, like, seeing the way that he walks, seeing who he is every single day, inspired me to be a better man, you know, and, ha and inspired me to check check my engine light and just be like, okay, like, what, what we really got up in here, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What's really inside? Yeah, I think, uh, oh, wow, this is something right here. Monkeys have taken over the city of Lopburi outside of Bangkok. Go ahead, Whoa. monkeys. Go ahead, monkeys. But this, Jamie, this seemed like a look at this, man. But I'm, this is what I look at. They together. Like, they they fighting. Look, it's a civil war. It's a monkey civil war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is real Planet of the Apes, y'all. Like, Wrong. do you see how, like, assembled they is? That's a good point. Look at the front lines they had right there. Go back a little Man, bit. Man, come on. Bro. They got a dang general out there with them, huh? No, really. It's Planet of the Apes. Look, nature. Bro, I'm telling you, look, nature. But they really turning. Like, it's really, like, they fighting. Like, look, they ain't attacking no civilians. <laughs> no. Like, they all at each other. <laughs> like, this is real Planet of the Apes. Y'all thought it was a game. This is real. And look, then they going back to the... Look. They retreating. That's look. lunchtime. But, bro, like, do they live there? Do they live in that palace? <laughs> no, they take it over. Like, oh, my gosh. I've never seen, like... We don't we don't even get that organized. These monkeys was organized, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like front lines. It looked like one of them had a whistle saying charge. <laughs> like, golly. Yeah, the monkeys is why well, I look like Bill Parcells with their coach, <laughs> but they really I feel like they put together like they got a Rob Ryan defense going on yeah, over here. They structured. Um, it's Easter, man. Jameis, I think we gotta eat a W for the Lord, man. Can we do it? Let's eat a W for the Lord, man. All Please. Right. All right, brother. Toast it up, man. He has risen, brother. Dang. 
<laughs> Jameis Winston, man. Thanks for uh, – on behalf of New Orleans, man, we want to just thank you, man. I think it's been so fun to, to have your energy around, man. Yeah, just I think even just today, it's like you never know what things you're going to hear. Like whenever we do a podcast, you know, you never know sometimes if it's going to be just having fun or joking around or if you're going to need to hear some words that you need to hear, mm -hmm. you know. So I appreciate it, man. No, I appreciate you, bro. Uh, I'm really inspired by like your story, by how you had a paradigm shift, man. how you a man of increase, man. And for you to be vulnerable enough to share with me some of the stuff that you be still going through, I think like that has a, that that as a human element for the success that you have already like accumulated, right? In the work that you put in, like when Joe told me you was you just in Australia and then you just took a, a red eye over here just to come talk with me. Yeah, and also we made have it, a, man. and also have a show. You know, just what you put in, man, is you you know you you live in on purpose, bro. And I'm I'm grateful to be in your presence and and do this with you, bro. Gang, thanks. Jameis Winston, man. Mm -hmm. Best of luck in Cleveland. Uh oh yeah. Your crew gave me this new one right yeah, here, bro. Saying? That's the logo. That's the Jabbo wins, huh? Yeah, that's the Jabbo wins. You know what I'm saying? That's a in Cleveland color. So dog pound, go get your t-shirts. Wow. You know what I'm saying Theo got the first one. All right. All right. You can be next. Yeah, yeah. You could be next right there. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time, bro. Uh, thank you, buddy. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone.